You are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson. 2004 Olympian. Four-time national judo champion. Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Author, speaker and coach. Hey, what's going on? This is Dr. Roddy Ferguson, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Roddy. Now, in this edition of Coffee with Roddy, I want to tell you something that's really, really, really exciting. I have on the phone with me in a conversation, three-time Olympian, world champion, two-time Olympic silver medalist, Terrence Trammell. And I'm having a problem inside of the, of the dojo, and I'm really exhausted in terms of finding a, a method or a modality to train this young lady inside my dojo. I don't know exactly how to encourage her through a space and a place that I talked to Terrence about. And I told him I was going to record the phone conversation because I looked to him for some advice. Um, in the world-class space, there's, there's a pecking order. Like we're all Olympians, but in the pecking order of Olympians, you have your Olympic medalists, um, then you have your gold medalists and then you have multiple time Olympians and multiple time Olympic medalists. And Terrence is a multiple time Olympian, multiple time Olympic medalist, multiple time world champion, indoor and outdoor. Uh, he went to the University of South Carolina, is inducted to the University of South Carolina's Hall of Fame. And I think right now he's coaching high school and he has some dude on his team um, that in the beginning of the year ran 10 7 1 in the 100 meters. Uh, he's an outstanding coach. He ran, um, he was on the end of his career when one of the people who went to Howard University, David Oliver, who's the head track coach at Howard University, um, was was starting his professional career. Um, and I look up to both of those, those um, I want to call them young men because they're still a little bit younger than me. I look up to both of those young men and what they've done in the sport of track and field. Uh, even today, as a matter of fact, this morning, um, at the time that I'm talking, I called Terrence to ask him a question about what I should do with uh, with my son and to have my son throw in the javelin. And I'm not in agreement with him throwing the javelin because when I was competing, I threw the shot, put in a discus, but I also ran two races because I was out there for speed work because I played football. And the coach has my son throwing three events and only running one. That's just not enough running. And I wanted to know how to best uh, have that conversation with with um, with the coach while still respecting him because it's a team sport. And Terrence, he put a, he put some good things on my mind. One of them being the um, you know, just the risk of of you know, just shoulder injury from just not knowing how to throw the the javelin correctly. And Rufus definitely doesn't know how to throw the javelin correctly. And uh, when Terrence said that, my son kind of nodded his head like his shoulder was hurting from this last weekend. So I was able to approach the conversation respectfully with the uh, with the coach, and I appreciate Terrence for that. But without any further ado, I want to let you um, hear a conversation that Terrence and I had. And I also want to tell you that this conversation uh, and this edition of Coffee with Rodi is sponsored by Judo is Life. Absolutely fantastic book that was written by me. You can go to www.judoislife.net and see how I take the 10 A's and the, um, the philosophical practices and approaches that we have in Judo and apply them um, to make my life better and how you can use them to make your life better, too. So thank you so much and welcome to this particular edition of Coffee with Rodi. So, real question. Mm-hmm. I have an athlete that technically she's good. Mm-hmm. She is not able to push. I'm not just talking about the regular pain. I mean, you you know how when you run in, um, they say you run in 500 repeats, okay? or 400 repeats and you get to that point where you just feel like you can't run no more uh-huh. and instead of gearing down you got that mechanism in your mind that tells you to push into it right i don't know how to coach her to push her into that space because every time she gets there when we're doing repeats on like the on the aerodyne bike as soon as it hurts she just shuts down or she just stops. Mm -hmm. Like she's not able to 
push through that. I don't know what that's called, and I'm having such a problem with it, dog, because I just never did it. Mm-hmm. And I'm figuring since you coach high school, you had to work some kids through this space. Right. I don't know what that space is called. I have no clue what it's called. I know, you know, in wrestling or judo, we call it the grind. And, you know, mm-hmm. we play around and track talk about, you know, rigor mortis or the monkey jumping on your back. But I'm not talking... I'm not talking about the feeling. I'm talking about the behavioral mechanism of running into the fire. Like, how do you coach somebody to run into the death? They changing themselves to. This what I this what I, I tell I tell my kids. This is the point where humans become superheroes. Damn. Because every time they get to that point, they shitting off that, that side, that limitation side. Now they're becoming superhuman. That's what I tell them. So when you look at these cartoons and these shows or these movies now, where these people are, you know, defying death, and they can move something just by, you know, looking at it, you know, doing that, uh, what is it? telepathic stuff or Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be they had to get from somewhere so they show sometimes these these superheroes go through these very dramatic situations they show them where the the serum or something got in their system and and, and you know they went to the the, 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 the genesis story yeah the the, the, the genesis story right 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 but they never show that long term. They only show that for a few minutes. And then they think, you know, bam, they superhero. You know. Gotta let them understand that that part that they see in the movie is the most important part. That's how they become the superhero. Uh, so you got you gotta talk to them about basically sh- Basically, they they have to constantly kill off that part of themselves, so that mm-hmm. so that so they can get the new growth. Yep. Okay. That's exactly what it is. I think I think that will resonate with kids a lot more. I don't. I didn't know what to say, and you need mm-hmm. you need the right words at the right. And, I, and listen, I was going through, and I was like, who can I call about this? And I was going through in the dojo because I was I was literally. So you go from I, I ain't no perfect coach. I'm a good coach. I ain't no perfect coach. So you mm-hmm. so you go from encouraging, pushing, hollering, cussing, <laughs> berating, mm-hmm. and then and you say, then you get to the point where you know it's a damn shame that you die here like, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a damn shame you got all this damn talent and you know you go you because you're trying to. You trying to find, trying to find something you try to, you trying to find something that stick. You're like, well, let, me, let me use this one. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna use this one. And then it hit me. I was like, I was like, man, you don't have the you don't have you don't have it. Like, we, listen, when you when you trying to build something, and and you got a damn, you got a hammer, a screwdriver, a Phillips head, all these different diagonals and pliers. You got all this here, but you need an Allen wrench. It don't matter how many tools you got if you ain't got no damn Allen wrench. Yep. And I said, let me call somebody who I know got an Allen wrench for this situation. <laughs> because it's, it's man, it's, it, as much as it's the same, all the sports are the same, they still have their differences. And what she was doing, so when, when there's somebody in front of you on the mat, the the possibility of getting hurt will make you, you understand what I'm saying? Like somebody taking their elbow and putting your eye socket or rubbing their forearm across your face, it will make you react. But that's a low level of functioning when it comes to being a, an elite athlete. You got to be able to do that in the gym by yourself when nobody else is around. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, we have we all have practices. And we have coaches, but we all have practices when we, we ain't no coach there. And you got to make the time, make the number, hit the thing, lift the weight, do the reps. And mm-hmm. and when it's a when it's a set of ten, it ain't no I did six and then I stopped and then I did four more. That's that's a non set. Right. That's a warm up set of six and a warm up set of four. Mm-hmm. That's not a. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 
it's not a set of ten. It's, it's not a set of, right, it's not a set of ten, which is on the paper. So I was like, how do I how how do I get her to get to do this by herself, to hit these numbers on this bike by herself? And I, you know, you, you can't go through self-talk and because she was and she told me she's I was telling myself that I can do it. And then when my legs start burning, I didn't do it. <laughs> Right, yeah, that's a, that's how a fake daddy is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. People can tell you all that self talk. It, self talk has it has it has its validity, mm-hmm. but it ain't. It's not the whole thing. It's not the whole piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the, the big thing, like you know, because they they the, these kids now they they gravitate to that. They gravitate to what's grandiose. They gravitate to um, the larger the life. The, yeah, the, yeah the, what, what, the, uh, the, the Kardashian type of thing. Right. So what's ever going to make them the the next big thing for them? That's why I was saying there was so it was so poignant that you talked about this is what will make you superhuman. Mm-hmm. That's what we used to say all the time. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had a workout one time when I got with Coach Page, and and when I got with Coach Page, I had already had both my Olympic medals. You know, I'm going for number three, and and, and trying to get me a couple of uh, world championships along the way. And he put this workout on us one time, man. Uh. I could not see when I was finished. That's it, there, yeah, because uh, the sugar get low. You can't, yeah, now you, 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 yep. you, your eyesight goes. It took me 30 minutes to walk from the finish line down to where the start line of the 100 meters was, because that's where my clothes were. It took me 30 minutes. And I wasn't even walking straight, I was walking at an angle. I never forgot that workout. Yeah, you know, those are ones where you wish you put some, you put some, you put that little jar of honey in your bag or something. Yep. Yep. Because yep. listen, I listen. I done had the workouts where I looked in my bag and I was like, damn, I ain't bring, I ain't bring no goo gel, I ain't bring no honey, I ain't bring no nothing. I said, well, this, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's gonna be a tough one today. Yeah. Yep, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like I tell them four nine, this ain't gonna tickle, but you get the best out of yourself. I I I I didn't say the right thing. When you tell him, when when you tell him, he said, mm-hmm. when you tell him, <laughs> he said, go ahead, go ahead and fess up, go ahead and fess. Up. <laughs> and I, and I wasn't cussing and screaming. I, I told, him, I said, I said, you you need to, I said, you need to die. But that's a that's a that's a conversation that an adult athlete would understand. Yep. That's that, that's not a that's not a conversation that a kid was gonna understand. Right. And I didn't have the tools for that. Mm-hmm. I ain't had the tools for that. Yeah, you got you got to die to yourself to be a, a much better person. You you do, and it's and he, we know that it's actually it's a it's a. It's a training baptismal. Mm-hmm. Like when you go when you go train every once in a while, some some training sessions are just training sessions. They're just training sessions. You're gonna train. You're gonna get better. You're gonna train. You're gonna get better. And there's some training sessions that are baptisms. Yep. You're gonna go down, and when you come up, you are not going to be the same. Yep. A whole different person. <laughs> you gonna be listen. You gonna be a whole different person. You're gonna be a whole different person. And you got uh-huh. and you got to share the old. And, and they don't understand they when they dunk you underneath that you don't you don't come up when you get ready. Uh-uh. No, you come, you up, come when up when they bring you. you. When they bring you, not bring, bring. That's right. <laughs> when they bring you. Up, when they you bring you up, up, exactly, exactly. You got to get all that up off you. Up at you too. But thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> disciplinary workout that's like that I call it the car wash for the very same reason 
You go in one way, you come out another. It's a disciplinary workout. Yep. That's when I. That's when. That's when they feel like they can talk when I'm talking. That's when they feel like. Uh, and this is primarily. This is primarily football when I did this. When they feel like they can talk while I'm talking. When they feel like they can give seventy percent instead of the hundred I'm asking for. When they're not executing the plays. Not paying. Not, not paying attention to detail. Yep, not yeah. reading your keys, you know, all that type of stuff. Oh, okay. Well, guess what? <laughs> line up. They said, on the line. Man, when I tell them jokes, them two words right there, oh my gosh. Then they start ranting on each other. I told you something. Too uh -huh. late, now. Too late now. Now we, now we got to get this work in. Yep. And, it, and, it, and it's really not, it's just some fine tuning. And I like the way you say it. It's not punishment. It's discipline. It's disciplinary work. Yep. Yeah. Cause that's all it is. I'm, I'm trying to help you increase your discipline. That's it. Yeah. But dog, man, I appreciate it, man. I, that, that, I, I don't, you know, I don't like to call you when I, when I need stuff like that. But man, I tell you what, coaches need some coaching up too. Hey, man, I'm talking to bro. You I, know. I appreciate you, dog. I needed that. You got you got you got, you got you got to bring your superhero out. All right, man. Love you, dog. Appreciate it. Love you too, team. Group. Damn. That was good.